respect to your chair. These preliminary remarks you are making are prejudicial, and I believe that as representing the good people of Serbia also, it doesn't lie in your mouth to remind us of the things that you said. Thank you. This is a completely rude remark, and I can send you out of the house now. It lies in my authority to do so. You represent the good people of Sefi. We are so. I represent the whole country. Please, my child, take him out of the house. So, honorable members, I will now read a message from His Excellency the President. I have one important message from him, and that deals with the nomination of justices for our consideration to be appointed to the Supreme Court. As for the how, is for you to determine. It's dated 16 July 2024. It reads, Mr. Speaker, reappointment of justices of the Supreme Court. I hope this finds you in good health and spirits. As a result of pending and projected vacancies on the Supreme Court, occasioned by the retirement of Mr. Justice Ni Ashikoti on 2nd October 2023, and the pending retirement of Justice Mariama Ousu on 18th November 2024, respectively. The Judicial Council advised me on 24th May 2024 by letter under the hand of its chairperson, Chief Justice Jetrud Tokonu, of his nominations for my appointment to a court of, of their replacements in accordance with Article 1442 of the Constitution of the Republic. In order to achieve full current complement of the justice of the court for the next legal year, I have decided to appoint to the Supreme Court as advised by the Judicial Council and subject to the satisfactory conclusion of the processes set out in Article 1442 of the Constitution the following persons. One, Justice Sophia Rosetta Oduokwa Benasco Esa. And two, Professor Richard Frimpong Opong. Upon receipt of the Judicial Council's advice, and in accordance with my obligation under Article 1442, I consulted with the Council of State on the intended appointments. The Council of State has, by letter dated 15 July 2024, notified me of the successful completion of the consultation process. I am therefore in, in further accordance with Article 1442 seeking the approval of Parliament for the appointment of the nominees as Justice of the Supreme Court. Their curricular vitae are hereby attached. I am fully satisfied that each of these persons is duly qualified and eminently fit to discharge the functions of a justice of the Supreme Court. 
that is left for us to confirm or disagree with His Excellency in this one. Mr. Speaker, it is my respectful hope and expectation that the approval of the nominees will proceed expeditiously to enable them to assume office as soon as practicable. I thank you in advance for your cooperation. Signed, Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu. Honorable members, I accordingly refer the, uh, the nominees to the appointment committee for consideration and report to the House. Please, you have to apply the new standing orders in this matter. And as we proceed on recess, I expect that the committee will sit during the course of the recess to consider these nominees. And any time we resume, we will consider them on the floor of the House to see whether it is any full complement that they want to, to make sure is maintained. Which full complement, I am not aware of. And so we are being called for, through this letter as a House, to look at the issue of a full complement of the Supreme Court. Should we be 13? Should we be 15? Should we be 20, 40, or 100? It's for this House to decide. And I'm urging you to look at this issue during the constitutional reforms or to pass legislation to give an upper limit as to how many can be at the Supreme Court of a country of 33 million people. Please, this is notice to you. I don't need to go beyond that. Honourable members, I have no formal communication today. So we we'll move on to item five on the order paper, which deals with the correction of votes and proceedings and official reports. We we'll start with the correction. Sorry, Deputy oh. Minority Leader. Thank you, Round Speaker. I wanted to briefly make some few comments on the announcement. Uh, you rightly pointed out the concerns of majority of Ghanaians and frankly members of parliament on the limits of the Supreme Court judges. And more importantly, right now, Speaker, we just engage you on the time left for this parliament to go on recess. We have barely one week. And obviously, these are very serious appointments that the appointment committee must do a very good job on. And so clearly, the point you made, in addition to the time we have, the necessary requires that this cannot be considered in this particular session. If we want to do a good job, because practically, we are talking about a week and a half to this serious office. No, he said we should come back during the vacation. And so, Honourable, Honourable, the initial concerns we have, Honourable Deputy, and the fact that, frankly, <laughs> Honourable Deputy Minority Leader, I think you are out of order. The matter is in the bosom of the House. And the procedure is very clear. So 
when they report to the House, we will all look at these issues. But in giving you the information, I've given you an idea of the expectations of the people of Ghana. That is for you to consider as part of the reports and for the House to decide as to whether we will approve or disapprove those nominations. His Excellency clearly stated that he is constitutionally injuncted to do what he has done. And so it's now for you to also look at. Are eavesdrops and the senior member is saying a few things, but since he's not saying it into the mic, I won't be the one saying it. Honorable member, you want to speak? If you want, I will grant you the opportunity. Yes. Mr. Speaker, with all due respect to your chair, these preliminary remarks you are making are prejudicial, and I believe that, as representing the good people of Serbia also, it doesn't lie in your mouth to remind us of the things that you said. Thank you. This is a completely rude remark, and I can send you out of the house now. It lies in my authority to do so. You represent the good people of Sefi. We are so. I represent the whole country. Please, my child, take him out of the house. My child, take him out of the house. I will not interdict such disrespect. It lies in my mouth. Honourable members, take it easy, take it easy, take it easy, please. Yes, Majority Chief Whip. Speaker, we acknowledge the wisdom you have gathered this house and how we have navigated as a house to this point and I mean we've had moments laced with tension we've had some tense moments in this house and all that because you've shown leadership and it is incumbent upon us in leadership to help you guide the house uh, what happened a moment ago was unfortunate um, and so we want to form on behalf of the entire caucus and my colleague want to render an unqualified apology to, to you and your office. And we hope that this, this draw the curtains and let's bring matters to a close. Because we are, we are very sorry and we apologize sincerely for what happened. So I say this on behalf of the member and also for the entire caucus. We are sorry. Thank you so much, Majority Chief Whip. Honorable members, that ends the matter. No more comments on this matter. Let's move on. Let's Unless you want to say something else. But not on that issue. Yes, I, I rose just to seek your guidance. I start with the responsibility to legislate. Are we.
by an arm of government to agree to any proposal sent to us by the, any of the other two arms or as an state institution is within our constitutional right to raise questions, an arm of government, in fact, not an institution, to raise questions about certain proposals that are made by any of the other two arms. A classical example, the, the matter you are suggesting we shouldn't comment. You are completely, my, completely I'm, out of order. Honourable member, you are out of order. I know he is your colleague, but you are my very good friend, so I will not, I will not mention your name. Yes, honorable members, let's, let's proceed.